Okay, what you are looking at is soon to be primary fermenter for 30 gallons of wine. This is a 32 gallon trash can, which I bought a little spigot for. It's going to go right here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start a batch of wine. I, I've always done wine on a small scale before, never, never anything large, never had any large containers until I found this container floating about. It's in a swamp. And uh, this is just for fun. I'm not, I'm not expecting to get a fantastic tasting wine, as I'll probably end up using. Uh, it'll probably be uh, more sugar water than fruit. Before I start here, I'm going to be making a sanitizing solution. And that's going to be um, two ounces of this potassium metabisulfite per gallon of water. Neatly get this in here. And that'll be my cleaning solution for this this project. And the plan is heat this up, put the sugar in here to melt it. Um, eventually it's going to end up in here. I am using some fruit in here. Obviously in this case strawberries since it's going to be strawberry wine. I like to put them in a clean brand new nylon. It's a good way to strain it. Get the pulp out later on. So I'm going to fill this up. I got a couple more of these. Um, this is heating up. and It's going to be a highly concentrated mix of sugar and water. And we'll have to mix it in with the 30 gallons here sooner or later. And then we'll have to check it with a hydrometer to make sure we get the right amount of sugar. What you're, uh, what you're going to want to do if you have your strawberries is uh, squeeze them. Ooh, ooh. Get those juices go in here. Oh, yeah. I got another couple in, in the bucket already. I don't like to put too many in at the same time. And these will help get broken down. We're going to put some pectic enzyme in here. That'll help break these things down and juicify them. Even the, even the canned strawberries are in the nylon. That's tied. Go right in, along with the syrup. Once the water heats up, we're going to put in our uh, uh, extracts, sugar. I'm going to try and get it all mixed into that that bucket. Pay no attention to that fly. He is of no concern. Uh, I'm also going to be putting raisins inside. I probably should be putting more in, but this is all I have for right now. The, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use a litmus strip to test the acidity of the wine. And this is going to, uh, <clears throat> this is going to need to be like a 3.4. Um, or 3.5 somewhere in there and uh, what I plan on doing is I have an acid blend that I'll add to the wine because it's most likely going to need acids looks like we may be in the 5 range it's between 4 and 5 I have another test kit that would give a more accurate result which I might use but we'll see I put in as much acid blend as I had because I knew it wouldn't be enough, so I've had to resort to uh, lemon juice, which is okay. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but I mean, we're making wine out of a trash can. So I'm um, quickly checking the sugar with a hydrometer. Looks like we're at about a 1.045, and we're going to have to add enough sugar to get it to a 1.085. So I'm going to go ahead and Make a sugar water mixture, heat it up, 
and add it to the mix until we get a 1.085. Okay, I got the, as you can see, <laughs> um, I got the sugar up to level. We're at a 1.087 approximately. Um, I don't necessarily have the acidity where I like it, but I don't want to add any more lemon juice than I already have because I don't want it to take on that lemon smell. This, uh, these are Camden tablets. I probably should have crushed them. I got 30 of them in here. Normally, what I normally like to do is boil my solution before I make wine, and then after it cools down, I add the yeast. But um, obviously, the just the scale of this is presenting lots of challenges. One of which being I can't boil 30 gallons of anything in any good amount of time. So I'm gonna have to go this route. I'm gonna let the Camden uh, work on the uh, the juice here for 24 hours, and tomorrow I will add the pectic enzyme and uh, the yeast. Most likely gonna end up adding a screen to the top of this too to keep uh, bugs out since it's in the garage. Normally I would just maybe put a light cloth over it or in some rare cases I've even um, gone as far as to just leave it wide open like that but just being a garage I'll probably get a, I have a new piece of screen I can put over that in the meantime. You can see the sides of this are bulging out. Hopefully the seams hold. Otherwise I'm going to have 30 gallons of highly concentrated syrup uh, all over my garage, which probably wouldn't be cool to clean up, but that's a chance you got to take. And I got my little lever there, it doesn't seem to be leaking, which is a good thing. So uh, we'll see what happens. What you're looking at is uh, the wine transferred into the new blue container. I went ahead and put the uh, this uh, faucet on it, the spigot here, attached it to a garden hose. And the garden hose is going inside of this uh, container here of sodium metabic sulfite and water. The bubbles you see are CO2. For, for as much CO2 as you make, you're also making that much alcohol. So that entire container will end up being um, maybe about 15 pounds lighter than when it started. What I actually had to end up doing though, inside of the garbage can, and this is uh, thanks to a, a tip from one of my good buddies, Jason. It was uh, adding a little fish tank heater. Uh, being out in the garage at this time of the year, I was, I was struggling to keep 65 degrees on the wine. And proper fermentation is going to occur around 72 degrees. Um, while normally I don't place any em emphasis on temperature, uh, this case I didn't have a choice. I couldn't bring it in the house. So I had to go ahead and meet, uh, heat up that wine with a fish tank heater. Um, that specific heater is uh, 50 gallons, and it it took about a day to bring it up to temperature. But you know, after the after it was up, it was no problem after that, and that that greatly increased my uh, fermentation time here. And you can go ahead and see the bubbles there. We're gonna let this sit for uh, maybe a month. Also, I have a sample here of the wine. This way I can see what's going on here. And I like to keep them in these Oberweiss bottles. <clears throat> you may be able to see a little bit of sediment at this point. It's, it's a little hard to see, but there is, there's a tiny bit of sediment at the bottom of this container. Um, this container I just have a balloon on top. I don't have any sort of an airlock. And every now and again, I'll just let the air out. I don't like putting pinholes in them. I'm afraid that uh, that air is eventually going to get back in here. Now, if it has to rack from this point, I'm probably going to end up uh, putting it, pumping it back up into this container since there's obviously no way to lift up uh, 200 plus pounds um, uh, short of getting a couple guys here to help me. but. Probably pump it up into here and then back down into uh, this container right here. So, uh, and then we might sit on it for maybe another three months or so, three or four months, and then bottle it if we can find enough bottles. <laughs> so, uh, 